Right fans, it's your old pal and favorite schlock jock, Uncle Ghouli, here again to take you into the world of horror, science fiction, and cult movies that we, for some reason, like to call Horror Incorporated. And it's time once again to put your brain on hold as the hero of this week's movie puts his fiancés in a pan. All part of the sleazy, low-budget fun of 1962's The Brain That Wouldn't Die. It's kind of an unfair title, though, as the brain in question doesn't really have much of a choice in the matter. The brain that wouldn't die, sir. That's right, Carbuncle. In a more stubbornly immortal brain, you'd be hard-pressed to find. Although it is somewhat of a misleading title, as it's not the uh, brain itself that won't die, but the whole head. Even though the movie itself is for the most part brain dead? Am I correct in assuming, sir? Yes, that's right, Carbuncle. It is another example of the fine, so bad it's good school of filmmaking. Uh, although this film is really so bad that even Ed Wood himself would be ashamed. Ah, uh, yes. So we're in for a real treat this week, aren't we, sir? We are indeed, Carbuncle. We are indeed. By its cheesy production values, sleazy main characters, a, a goofy football-headed monster, complete with laces up the back, a, a mansion consisting of one sparsely furnished room and a really low-budget laboratory. Why, it's fun for all. Ah, uh, yes. A sparsely furnished one-room mansion, um, much like this one, sir. Yeah, much like this. Yes, and here the viewers aren't even allowed a view of the laboratory. Yes, 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 we, we get the idea, Carbuncle. We... Hey there, Uncle Gooley. Hello, oh, if it isn't my favorite News 13, up from the vault with this week's movie. And it is, I tell you, it is! Another Goonie Brain movie this week, huh? Unfortunately. Uh, that's right, 13, and while no brains were actually harmed during the making of this film, I can't make the same promise about watching it. Well, you do watch at your own risk, I suppose. Absolutely. And how's Wolfie here doing? Oh, he's great. Yeah. Housebreaking is going real well. Oh, yeah? Has he broken any houses? Two or three. Oh, good boy. Oh, and by the way, I do believe your Wolfie thingy has been leaving his half-chewed-upon bones in my bed linen. No, those aren't Wolfie's. Those are mine. Oh, dear. I think I'm going to be sick. See? <laughs> it's working already. Oh, good. It's good. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Another joke at old Carbuncle's expense. Oh, uh, that's right, Carbuncle. You know, the fun never ends around here. Yes. A non-stop parade of hilarity and hijinks. Till one's sides begin to ache from laughing, so... Ah, Gordon! Ah, Gordon, old man. What do you say we go on up to the booth and spool this baby up, huh? All right. Well... As much as I'd love to hang around here and humiliate you some more, I promised Wolfie we'd go to the park. Very nice. To romp and play with his fellow canines. Yeah, and bury the bones after he's done playing with them. Come on, Wolfie. Ah, oh, yes. Delightful child. From what I understand, she's up for delinquent of the year, third year running. Fourth. Oh, dear. Ah, oh, yes. My mistake. Fourth year running. We are all so very proud. And should you at home have any pride at all, you'll avoid this week's filmic offering, The Brain That Wouldn't Die, an upstate New York low-budget classic featuring Herb Jason Evers, Virginia Leith, Leslie Daniel, Eddie Carmel, and Adele Lamont. And don't anyone say we didn't warn you. Mm. Oh. Ah, yes, fun, isn't it, to return to the early 1960s, when open-heart surgery apparently only took under 10 minutes. A guy could waltz out of a major metropolitan hospital with a bunch of dismembered limbs tucked neatly under his arm, and the staff could go ahead and light up a heater and puff away right there in the operating room. Ah, good times. Now, of course, it's much tougher to sneak a sack full of limbs and organs out of a hospital dumpster. And don't you even think of having yourself a good smoke. Guess all it takes are a few spoil sports to ruin everyone else's fun. Ah. Uh, well, here you go, sir, as requested. Ah, good. Now, see, that wasn't so difficult, now was it? No, sir, not at all. We simply whisked these discarded body parts right out from under the noses of the security guards, half the police force, 
and passed several very angry representatives of the Environmental Protection Agency, sir. Good, good. Yes, sir. Though for me, I do still prefer good old-fashioned grave robbery, not so much baggage attached. Yes, well, you know, sometimes the old-fashioned way is still the best. Yes, of course. Uh, so what would you have me do with these, sir? <laughs> for goodness sake, throw them in the dumpster, of course. I, I don't want these filthy, diseased things cluttering up my house. Well, why did you have us get nah, them? Nah, nah, nah. Come on, Gordon, what do you say we have a good old stogie? Uh, Carbuncle could take care of all that. Come on, let's go have a smoke. But, uh, well, I must say, that was an even greater exercise in futility than is usual around here. And speaking of exercises in futility, let us return now to the brain that... No, you, you stay away from me. Stay away. What's the matter with you, Wolfie? You usually love Molly the mailman. Stop that. Stop that. <coughs> stay away from me, you... Well, you really do have to admire that thick man carbuncle spirit. It's pretty much a given he doesn't stand a chance against Wolfie, especially when there are discarded ah! limbs involved. <laughs> See? what I tell you? Uh, uh, as I was saying, speaking of exercises in futility, let us now return to the brain that wouldn't die, shall we? I actually prefer a So mind. this Dr. Bill Cortner guy, is he a good guy or a bad guy? Well, what do you mean, 13, my dear? Well, he's some sort of surgical genius, right? And he pretty much has the typical good guy looks from one of these movies, but he's as nutty as they come. So that pretty much makes him a bad guy, right? Well, you know, that's a good question. Well, he kills his wife in a car crash that he's directly responsible for. Uh, he doesn't notify the authorities, but rather he steals her decapitated head from the accident scene and sneaks it back to his lab, where he brings it back to life in a photo-developing tray filled with grape Kool-Aid. Then, then he goes out trolling for women with hot bodies to murder and grabs his fiancée's head onto them. Yeah, hmm. see what I mean? I mean, he does all these cool things and all, but he still saves some lunkhead's life on the operating table at the beginning of the film. I just don't get it. Doesn't make much sense, but you know, it does sound like a good plan at that. None of that nonsense about saving your fiance's life or anything, but it does sound to me like a good excuse to invite some shapely women here to Horror Incorporated and check them out, huh? Well, yes, it is irresponsibly sexist and all, but at least it spares me from undergoing any sort of humiliating experimentation. Now, doesn't it? Looks as though I spoke too soon. Uh.